Welcome to your home garage and in this video I'm going to show you how to check your car's antifreeze also known as engine coolant. So your antifreeze is a colored liquid that is mixed with water to help regulate your engine during extreme temperatures. As the temperature outside changes from hot to cold, coolant is pumped throughout the engine block to maintain its optimum operating temperature. But antifreeze does more than just regulate temperature. It also helps to prevent corrosion. Most fluids in your vehicle must be checked and replaced at various mileage in order to be effective. And the same goes with your coolant. And at least twice a year, you should check your engine's coolant levels. So before the summer and before the winter. But always check your vehicle's owner's manual maintenance schedule for the proper information on when to flush and replace the coolant in your vehicle. So to test your antifreeze, you're going to need a couple of simple tools. First off, some eye protection, some gloves, a couple of rags, along with a hydrometer. Now in my case, I need one that tests ethylene glycol based antifreeze. Now if your antifreeze is propylene glycol, such as red or pink, then consider purchasing a refractometer for this test. And if you're not too sure if you're ethylene or propylene, just consult your owner's manual or call the dealership. And the purpose of the hydrometer is to test the relative density based on a concept of buoyancy. So basically the freeze up and boil over point. This doesn't check the additives in the coolant that protect against corrosion or lubrication for the water pump. For that, we're going to use the multimeter. So using the hydrometer to check for your vehicle's coolant level is relatively simple. So first, allow for your vehicle's engine to cool down sufficiently. And also make sure you're parked on a level surface for a proper reading. So the coolant in your vehicle must be around room temperature to avoid any sort of injury and to actually get an accurate reading with the hydrometer. Now I'm not doing it at room temperature, but performing a few other tests with this one will be sufficient. Next, locate the radiator fill cap and overflow. For safety, just touch the cap with your hand to verify that it is cool. Visually check the level in the overflow and make sure that it's at the proper fill mark and that the cap hasn't leaked fluid surpassing its 15 PSI threshold for replacement. Also take a look under your vehicle on a regular basis and make sure nothing is leaking. Also inspect the hoses as much as possible to look for any sort of leaks, cracking, or just deterioration in general. Now just turn your cap counterclockwise just to release any sort of pressure. Now cover the radiator cap with a rag to catch any spill and push down slightly while you unscrew the cap in a counterclockwise motion. And what you're going to want to do is inspect the inside of the radiator cap. So just run your fingers along the inside of the cap and what you're trying to feel for and look for is any sort of debris or metallic residue. And you're going to do the same test on the neck of the overflow container. Now if it's contaminated with debris and just discolored, just move to a rad flush and refill with new coolant. What you don't want to see is a milkshake color because that would mean that the oil is mixing with your coolant. So just make sure that it's the color that it's supposed to be, and in this case blue, so it all looks good. Now let's move ahead. Lower the hose end of the hydrometer into the radiator fill neck or overflow. It doesn't matter which one because they're both the same. Squeeze the rubber bladder located on the top of the hydrometer just like a turkey baster and slowly release it to draw the coolant into the tester. Make sure it's up to the fill line. And visually, you don't want to see any debris in the coolant. Give it a couple of taps to release any air bubbles and hold it level for an accurate reading. Note where the indicator point is on the freeze up scale. The freeze point of the coolant should not be warmer than minus 37 Celsius as indicated on the coolant container. If the reading shows a freezing point that is not suitable for your climate, then you must have your cooling system flushed and refilled because you want adequate protection for your area. 
Now check the other side of the hydrometer for the boil over reading. The coolant reading should show a boiling point of at least 129 degrees Celsius. If the indicated boiling point is lower than that, then you must have the coolant flushed and refilled. So now that we've checked the freeze up and boil over readings from the hydrometer, let's go ahead and squeeze out the small amount of coolant from the hydrometer back into the overflow container. And go ahead and place the cap back onto the overflow container, but don't seal it. And now we're going to do a quick check of your oil. So just make sure the oil looks normal based on its age and mileage of the vehicle. If the coolant was mixing with your oil, then your oil would have that milky white look to it, similar to if you added cream to your coffee. Now you, are, you already checked the color inside your overflow container, but this is just another way of doing another safety check to make sure that you don't have a blown head gasket. Now let's move to testing the coolant with a multimeter. So a simple diagnostic test of the radiator coolant for conductivity will show if you've got corrosion in your water pump, radiator, or heater core. So coolant has additives to protect corrosion. In fact, aging or worn coolant becomes a pretty good electrical conductor, accelerating internal electrolysis. The good news is it's pretty easy to check the conductivity of the coolant with a multimeter. If the conductivity is high, it's time for a coolant flush and fill. So here's a quick way to check. With your cold engine, remove the cap. Now go ahead and start your engine. So go ahead and set your multimeter to DC volts at 20 volts or less. So DC voltage is indicated with a solid line and a dashed line just above the V. You can also do a quick test of your car battery just to make sure you have it on the right setting. So here's the tricky part because you will need someone else to help you. So with the engine at operating temperature, and of course the cap is off, insert the positive probe into the coolant. And have your assistant rev the engine to 2000 RPMs and hold, and place the negative probe on the negative battery terminal. If your multimeter reads 0.4 volts or less, then your coolant is in great condition. If it's greater than 0.4 volts, that means the electrolysis additives are exhausted or non-existent. So no corrosion protection is available. So you want to see 0.4 volts or less. And with your engine at operating temperature, you're going to conduct another visual inspection. And what you're looking for is any sort of bubbling. That would be a bad thing because that would mean that your system isn't completely sealed and further inspection would be needed. In addition, you're going to want to visually inspect the exhaust. And what you don't want to see is white smoke because that would indicate the coolant is somehow getting into the combustion chamber. Now here's the same test conducted on my Honda Odyssey and you'll see that the reading is still below 0.4 of a volt but it's halfway there so likely after this winter season I'll just do a rad flush. And just make sure your cap is in good shape of course clean it before putting it back on. If it's deteriorated then just go ahead and replace it. Now you could check your coolant as many times per year as you want. And from the inside of the cabin, always pay close attention to your temperature gauge and note any fluctuations. If for whatever reason the temperature changes, make sure you stop right away and have it looked at further. So that is a step-by-step -step coolant inspection that you can easily do at home. We check the coolant visually with a hydrometer for freeze up and boil over and the multimeter check for corrosion protection. If all of them checked out, seal up the system and close the hood. So make sure you help keep this channel going by hitting that like button, sharing this video with a friend, and please comment below on if this helped you out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Your Home Garage.